So with the 30, 60, 90 triangles and the 45, 45, 90 triangles, and let's even do something like this on number six. If I just tell you that this is a square, uh, it look like it. if I tell you this is a square, and you know that because they tell you that all three sides are 13. Mm -hmm. Anytime in a square you draw in a diagonal, Anytime you draw in a diagonal, 90, 45, 45. right? So this is a this is a right angle. This angle has to be 45. This angle has to be 45. So anytime you have a square and you draw in a diagonal, two 45, 45, 90 triangles are formed. What if I have an equilateral triangle? Because this is the other one. There's some of these on that front page. If you know that's equilateral and I draw in an altitude, what kind of triangles are formed for those two smaller ones? 30, 60, 90 triangles. All right, so with a square, with the equilateral triangle, you need to know that those can be turned into 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles just by drawing in either a diagonal or uh, for, the for the equilateral triangle, an altitude. So here we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If I split off one of those triangles, we know that's 90, that's 45, that's 45. Remember the first thing you should do anytime you're looking at a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90 triangle is go through and label the triangle. The two sides across from the 45 degree angles we said to label what? Everybody remember that? Each of those is labeled L. Side across from the right angle is labeled L squared root 2. L times square root of 2. Good. Why is that not working? Look at that spot. Well, in this case, we know this side's 13, this side's 13. Remember, all you do on this, you take one of the sides that you know and what you labeled it with, and you set up an equation. Well, the equation here is just going to be L equals 13. Nothing to solve on that, so just wherever you see L, you stick in 13. So how long is this diagonal right here going to be for this? 13 times the square root of 2. That's a good enough answer. 13 times radical 2. That's what y is in this case. Sorry, I didn't see that they asked us for something else. That's what y is. We already found x because they asked us to find this angle right here. Well, what's the measure of that angle right there? 45 degrees. So anytime you draw a diagonal in a square, doesn't work for rectangles, doesn't work for other shapes, but in a square, if you draw in a diagonal, Two triangles formed have to be 45, 45, 90 triangles. And again, with the 45, 45, 90 triangles, sides across from the 45 degree angles are always labeled L or X or whatever you want to label them, but I use L. Side across from the right angle, which is the hypotenuse, is L times the square root of 2. In a 30, 60, 90, going back over that, if I split off one of these 30, 60, 90 triangles, side across from the 30 degree angle is labeled what? Side across from the 60? Good. L times the square root of 3. And the side across from the right angle? 2 times L, L times 2, whichever way. First thing you got to do, if, whenever you're doing 30, 60, 90s, 45, 45, 90s, or the sine, cosine, tangent, label your triangle. Sine, cosine, tangent, what do you label the three sides? The opposite, opposite leg, adjacent leg, hypotenuse. You got to do that first. Label the triangle so that you can see what you're doing. And then you go start set up equations and figure out the missing parts. Problem 12 on the front. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 60 meters. So I have this equilateral triangle and the perimeter 
60 meters. Well, if it's equilateral and the distance all the way around is 60, what's that tell me about each side? They're all the same. What are they? So that's 20 meters. That's 20 meters. That's 20 meters. Uh, find the length of an altitude. What's an altitude again? Vertex. So it goes from vertex. I'm just going to pick the one at the top. Could I just easily pick this vertex over here? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I picked the one at the top because that's the one that we usually look at. My thing's not working. It comes down and forms a right angle. Now, in an equilateral triangle, and we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about al altitudes, in an equilateral triangle, it comes down here, it forms right angles. But if this triangle is equilateral, guess what it does to this bottom side? It bisects it. It bisects it. So how long is this part right here? 10. How long is this part? 10. That only works for equilateral triangles. Well, when we do that, not only does it bisect this side, but guess what it does to this angle up here? Splits it. So in fact, what was this angle? Let's do that. 60. Originally, this angle was 60. Well, this angle up here, then it has to be how much? 30. This angle is 30. So again, we have two triangles. And they are 30, 60, 90 triangles. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the side across from the 30 degree angle should be labeled what? L. Side across from the 60 degree angle? L. L, L times. Now, I haven't mentioned this because I didn't want to till right now. Somebody said 2L. As you're trying to memorize these, because I know how some of your brains work, I, maybe I should. I, I'm not going to mention it. Forget it. The side is L radical 3 because I can tell as soon as I mention it, Peyton's going to, oh yeah, I could think that way, and then he's going to think that way, and it's going to be wrong, and I don't want that Peyton. <laughs> side across from the right angle is what? 2L. 2L. You've done that before. You're like, oh, no, no. Now, I, because I want to tell you where I see people mess up, but then when I do that, That's a good idea. some people get that thought in their head, like Josh here, you know, he'll be sitting here and that's the only thing he'll hear me say <laughs> that whole time and 15 minutes he'll hear me say, do, hear you say, do it this way, or, you know, I'll say don't do it this way and then I'll show not doing it that way and he'll see that, oh, so that's how you do that? You wouldn't do that. It'd be the only thing I didn't hear you say on a problem that really needed it, like, it's a big point problem too, so I'd miss, like, 10 points or something like that. Like, right there. Like, right in his stupid... What, Josh? All right, all right, all right. Back to this. How long did they tell us this side was? Josh, Shh. 20. Now, we already found this side, but even if you didn't know that, then you set up this equation. 2L equals 20. Divide by 2. What's L equal? 10. So how long is this side? 10. We didn't really need to know that. What they wanted to know is how long this altitude right here is. Well, what's it going to be? How long is that altitude going to be? 10 times square root of 3, 10 times radical 3. So that's your answer. Number 5. On the very back, I have to pick one that I have to read a bunch. Yeah. On a mountain bike trip along the Gemini Bridges Trail in Moab, uh, Utah, Nabucco, Nabucco, that must be a popular name somewhere else. That's about the third time we've seen it this year, isn't it? Stopped on the canyon floor to get a good view of the twin sandstone bridges. Nabucco is standing about 60 meters from the base of the canyon cliff, and the natural arch bridges are about 100 meters up the canyon wall. If her line of sight is five feet above the ground, what, uh, what is the angle of elevation to the top of the bridges? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of degree. Okay, you like some crazy scientist do that. All right, so 
We got this person standing here. Let's see if we can draw this and get some idea. We got this person standing here. They're five feet tall. They got a line of sight that normally goes straight out like that, right? And what we're trying to find is apparently they're looking up at something. We're trying to find this angle right here, so we'll call it X. That's an angle of elevation. Uh, let's see what all the details are. Nabucco is standing 60 meters from the base of the canyon cliff. So apparently the canyon cliff is here. 60 meters from that. And the natural arch bridge bridges are about 100 meters up the canyon wall. So up here somewhere where the, this person's looking is the bridge, the natural arch bridge. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> something, something like that. And it's, uh, it's 100 meters up the wall. Now, again, do I need that whole picture? No, because we know as soon as we do that, poor Austin back here, he's wondering why Nabucco doesn't have any arms and stuff, and he's not focused on the, the problem, <laughs> What's right? What's he standing on? <laughs> See, and that's West, Weston was already thinking about it. I didn't even bring up his name. But he, uh, is he floating in there? So he's not paying any attention to the math problem. So we got this. We're looking for this angle. Make sure you got out your calculator. This is 60 meters. This is 100 meters. Do we know that this is a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle? No, if we knew that, we wouldn't have to go through and solve it because we know what that angle is already. So what we have to use here is one of the trig ratios. With the trig ratios, make sure you remember your SOCOTOA sine, cosine, tangent, and it tells you which parts you're using and you're going to set up an equation. Well, what we need to do is label this triangle. Which angle are we going to deal with here? This one, this one, or this one? The one that's got X in it, because that's what we're looking for, right? That's how you know which angle you're dealing with. The side across from that angle is going to be labeled what? The opposite leg. The side across from the right angle is always labeled what? The hypotenuse. And then the other one's called the adjacent leg. Which one don't we care about? The hypotenuse. We don't care about the hypotenuse. And this is what we're going to do today also. So a lot of the stuff that we do today is going to be the same stuff. We're going to do this over and over again. We don't care about the hypotenuse. We care about the adjacent. We care about the opposite. We go back over here. Sine, cosine, tangent. Which one of those deals with the two that we care about? Tangent. Opposite over adjacent. So we set up our equation. It's going to be the tangent. Angle always comes next. What is our angle this time? X. So tangent x equals, this says opposite over adjacent. So what is it? And all you got to do, that's why I've been yelling at everybody to bring a calculator. You take your calculator. You are very welcome. You take your calculator. By stealing all Great. On your calculator, if you have a calculator like this, does anybody have a calculator that doesn't print across the screen? Yours doesn't print across the screen? It does have sine, cosine, tangent on yes. it. Does? I have to like put in the number. Right. right, so you gotta do it backwards. So just make sure if you're using a different kind of calculator, there's, there's nothing wrong with, you know, with that calculator. It's just, as I explain it, everybody has this, and one or two of you has the other kind. It sort of gets confusing. So you take your calculator. Since we are looking for an angle, please remember this. When you are looking for an angle, what button are you going to hit first on here? Second. The second button. You've got to remember that. That's the only time you're going to use that second button is when you're looking for that certain angle. 
So we hit second. What do you hit right after that? Tangent. Tangent. What's it pull up on your screen? Tan negative one. All right. And then it's got a parenthesis. We put in 100 divided by 60. Somebody mentioned the other day, well, can I use my ABC button for that fraction? Yeah, it works out the same. It does the same thing. Close the parenthesis. Hit enter. What's it tell us? says 59.036 something something. Yep. Everybody get that on their calculator because if you didn't get that I need to know it because then your calculator is set up in a different mode and I need to switch it for you. Everybody got that? Now they said round it off to nearest tenth. I, and on the test I'll tell you round all angles off to nearest degree because that's close enough for what we're doing. But if they wanted it to the nearest tenth what should I round this off to? Do I just write 59? Point 0.0. Does that point 0.0 mean something? No. Well, yeah. Yeah. If, if you're in math class, it doesn't mean anything. If you're in science class, significant figures, right? Significant uh, digits. You got. You need that zero there because that tells whoever looks at that next that you rounded it off to the nearest tenth and not to the nearest degree. All right, so they, remember when we were doing error, uh, we didn't call it error in here, we call it start of the year. Um, precision. When we were doing precision at start of the year, same idea here. If you just write 59, then whoever looks at it next thinks, oh, they must have rounded it off to the closest degree. But if you write 59.0, they know you got that much closer to it. You actually rounded it off to the nearest tenth. And if you write 59.03, then they know you went out even farther than that and, and made it a little more precise. So that O, even though it doesn't tell you anything mathematically, it does tell you something as far as the numbers go. So what's uh, Kabuta's? <laughs> minus site or angle of elevation on her site here or his site. 59.0 degrees. Is that normal? Can you look up 59 degrees? Yeah. Yeah. 59 degrees, maybe something about like that. Not a rule. So if you came up with something, you were working this problem and you came up that uh, this person's line of sight was like 182 degrees. He probably messed up somewhere because they're probably not doing something crazy there. Exorcist. Suppose the sun casts a shadow off a 35 foot building. If the angle of elevation of the sun is 60 degrees, how long is the shadow uh, to the nearest tenth of a foot? I'm not going to draw the whole picture again. I'm just going to draw the triangle. So we got the triangle. Hopefully the building over here forms the right angle with the ground. 35 feet here. That's how tall the building is. They tell us that this angle right here is 60 degrees. And we're looking for this distance. We'll call it X. I know they put a question mark on there, but we'll call it X. What kind of triangle do we have here? 30, 60 Could we use that? Yeah. Yeah. Could we also use the trig ratios to find it? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to do it both ways. If we do the 30, 60, 90 triangle, side across from the 30 degree angle should be labeled what? L. L. Side across from the 60 degree angle? L times the square root of 3. L times the square root of 3. Side across from the right angle? 2L. 2L. Now if we use that, if we do it this way, this is the equation we're going to set up. So L times the square root of 3 equals 35. Now since they said give our answer to the nearest tenth, what I would do with this, take your calculator, somebody help me out with this, and take 35 divided by the square root of 3 and just give the decimal answer. 
35 divided by the square root of 3. Instead of going through all that stuff that we did with the radicals and simplifying it and all that, if they want a decimal answer, then just use your calculator. What's it give you? 20.207259422. 207? Yeah. So they said there's 10, so we'll just go 20.2, right? Yeah. So how long is this side, the shadow down here? 20.2 20. 20. 20. feet. Now let's say you didn't realize that that was a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Got 60 degrees here. This is X. We know that this was 35 feet. And you think that, okay, I need to use sine, cosine, tangent on this. Which angle are we going to deal with? The 60 degree one, right? What's that side going to be labeled? Opposite. Opposite. Uh, the side across from the right angle is always labeled hypotenuse, and this side down here is labeled adjacent. Which one don't we care about here? We don't care about the hypotenuse. We care about these two. Which trig ratio? I erased my soca toa, but which trig ratio deals with opposite and adjacent? The toa part, the tangent again. So we do tangent. Tangent of what's our angle this time? Tangent 60 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, 35 over x. Watch because this will help on some of the others. First thing I do, I want to make this a proportion, so I put a 1 underneath that. Next thing you do, you can't solve a proportion with words in there. So you grab your calculator and you figure out what the tangent of 60 degrees in is. How do you do that? You just hit tan 60. Don't hit second. Tan 60. Now, do we want what uh, Brighton's telling us? His, his thing is telling you square root of 3. That's true. The tangent of 60 is the square root of 3. But since we're giving this as a decimal answer and doing all this stuff, let's just go ahead and give the decimal answer. So if Brighton, if yours comes up that way, then what you need to do is change that into a decimal form so you can use it for a problem like this one. How many spaces should we go out? Four. Four. So three, two, and what's that five tell you do the zero? Round it up. I lose anybody to that point? Yes. It's not that hard. What do we do now? Cross multiply. Cross uh, multiply. 1.7321 times x equals, I'll let you guys do this one. 35. Oh, 35. Thought I'd make you look smart today. Now what? Divide by Can we do 35 by a square root of 3? Yeah, you could do that. Why is that easier to punch into the calculator? I just did not change it. Yeah. If it's easier to punch into the calculator, then yeah, get right here. Yeah, the same answer. I don't know. Try it both ways and see. Somebody did it this way, see what you got. And somebody did it with square root of 3, tell me what you got. 20.207. So about 20.2. Is that what you got doing it the other way? Is that oh, I did the square root of 3. Is that what we got doing it using the 30, 60, 90 triangle? So how long is the shadow? 20.2 feet. So either way you did that problem, whether it's using sine, cosine, tangent, or 30, 60, 90 triangle, you're still going to get the same answer. I got this time I got 20.2 of 6. Oh, so you're like a, a hundredth off, not even a hundredth really, a couple thousandths off. Yeah.
because because what we did when you use this we rounded it to the ten thousands place here and when you use the radical three we didn't round it so gives you more a more precise answer so number four off the third page I give you some triangle it looks like this it's a right triangle angles X this is one this is four again Looking at this, can we use 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 rules for this? Yeah. No, because we don't know the angle. All right? So we're going to have to use sine, cosine, or tangent. Again, we're looking for an angle. So as we're looking for that angle, we've got to decide how to label the sides. We're going to use that angle because that's one we're looking for. What's the four going to be labeled? This is the key to all of this. Labeling these triangles, opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Or if you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, L, L radical 3, 2L. If you're dealing with a 45, 45, 90 triangle, L, L, L radical 2. You've got to label the triangles, very first thing. What's that side over here going to be labeled? Hypotenuse, this side, adjacent. Which one don't we care about? Which two do we care about? Opposite. Opposite and adjacent. Which trig ratio is that? Four over one. Tangent. Is that the only one you guys are having trouble with is the tangent? Because that's all you've had me do so far. You know why that's all you've had me do so far? Because when we're doing these problems, and, and especially with the word problems, and you use the sun shining down and all that stuff, well, the sun shining down on, some, on something, it's always the hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse. Usually we don't care about the hypotenuse because that's the actual sun's rays. Do you ever see anybody try to measure the sun's rays from the top corner of a building down to the end of the shadow? No. You'd want to know the height of the building or the shadow of the building. See, Peyton would do it. I bet Mr. and Mrs. Harrison wishes he could go out and do that. They probably tell him to do stuff like that every now and then. Peyton, go out and catch some of the rays of sunshine and bring them in for us. Did your dad ever tell you to go out and do something yeah. like that? He doesn't. <laughs> so he must have faith in you that you're not that silly that you would go out and try to do it, huh? <laughs> so we got the tangent. What's our angle this time? X. Remember, every time, trig ratio, or the name of the trig ratio, the angle, then what the ratio is. Well, tangent, remember that's your toe apart. So what two parts, or how, does, how do they go? Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So what is the opposite this time? Four, Four over one. And then all we do is take your calculator. Hopefully you don't have to put in four divided by one. Do you? Weston, yes. you got to put in 4 divided by 1? I do. Yeah. What do you have to hit on this? Second. Hit second. Ten. Make sure you hit second. Tangent. Four. Four. Close the parenthesis. And that should tell you the angle. Round it up and it's 76. So 76 degrees. So that angle is 76 degrees. If that angle is 76 degrees, how could we find this angle down here? 90 minus Okay, so remember the three of them should add up to 180, and what Peyton's saying is that these two should actually add up to be 90 because you already have 90 here. So what's 76 or 90 minus 76? So that angle right there would have to be 14. Could we do that using the trig ratios also? Yeah, it'd just be a lot more work than just adding and subtracting. Other questions? Kyle is at the end of a pier 30 feet above the ocean. His eye level is 3 feet above the pier. He is using binoculars to watch a whale surface. Uh, if the angle of depression of the whale is 20 degrees, how far is the whale from Kyle's binoculars? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Now that I read this problem, I think we messed up on the 
the buco problem. So let's go back to number five just real, real quick. Because we had Nabucco standing here. They looked at the cliff it out here. Well, that was just because my picture was terrible, but. No, but no, like, no. Like, it was 59.0. That was the degree. No. That was the degree. That was the degree. Now, where I messed up at, does anybody remember or know where I messed up at? I didn't subtract the five feet from over here when we put that side of the triangle in. Because they told us for a reason the eyesight is at five feet so that we could figure out where this thing is up here, whatever it is that uh, this person's looking at. So instead of having 100 over here, that should be 95. And then when, when we split off our triangle, this is 95, this is 60. And we're looking for this. Let's go back. The answer was 59, right? Uh, it becomes 57.7. Is it? So this is opposite. This is adjacent. We're using tangent. So the tangent of x equals 95 over 60. Somebody do that real quick on their calculator. Is that what you got, Corbin? Mm -hmm. What was it? 50. 57.7. 57. 57. 57.7 degrees. That should be the right answer. I think we got 59.0, so that five foot difference made it a little bit different. Now for, for stuff that we're probably doing, something like this person looking up at that and you're trying to figure out their angle that they're looking up, are you probably going to try to be real precise? Nah, I don't know why you'd be figuring that in the first place, but... Um, Very curious. I guess. Now if it was a pilot and they need to figure out their angle of elevation, then yeah, you probably want to be real precise like that right there. See Ryan, you say that you don't do any of this stuff, but you're going to use a lot of He was just saying that all the pages and stuff that you want to compare to look at. Well, the, 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 okay. ba the bad thing with just using the gauges, is if you don't know what the gauges are actually doing, and, the, and then the gauge messes up, you won't have a clue. And then if you're a pilot, lots of people die. No, well, it's, you don't have time. If, if your gauge is no, no, no. failing, there's going to be a big problem. No, uh, no, because a gauge could fail for yeah, that's many, why, many reasons. That's why in a cockpit, if you look at it, there's you got a PFD, which has a All right, back to number eight. Back to number eight. I'm not reading. What was the answer to that one? That was number five. All right, on this one, they give us a picture. It looks like this. I'm not reading that whole thing about Kyle again. Kyle is at the end of the pier, 30 feet above the ocean. His eye level is three feet above the pier. He is using binoculars to watch a whale surface. The angle of depression of the whale is 20. How far is the whale from Kyle's binoculars? I really don't know what angle of depression is. Though. Angle yeah. of depression is if I'm standing here and I'm looking straight out. All right, you see that? That's my it's straight not this one now. angle of depression. No, it's the angle. So you see the angle that my arms make? Yeah. It's that angle. If it's angle of elevation, I'm looking straight out, and then it's this angle. I didn't get on the middle. Yeah, if we can go over this. Oh. <laughs> All right, on this. Uh, what will they, will they ask us find? How far are the binoculars from <coughs> the whale? So we're actually looking for this distance this time, right? The bad thing with this one, this is his angle of depression, but that's not in our triangle down here. Well, there's two different ways you could do it. You could finish out this rectangle and use the top triangle, or you could uh, transfer some of that information down to the bottom triangle. If this angle is 20 degrees, what uh, what's this angle down here in the bottom triangle going to be? 20 degrees. Because those are alternate interior. interior. They make that zero in, right? 
So they're alternate interior angles, so that's 20 degrees. What the other thing you could do, if this is a rectangle, how long is this side over here? 33, how long is this side over here going to be? 33. Now you know everything and you could find x, it doesn't matter which triangle you use. If I use the top one, if I draw it right, if I use the top triangle, we know that this angle is 20 degrees, this is 33, we're looking for this distance. We're going to use this angle, so the 33 is going to be labeled what? Opposite. That's the opposite leg. Side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The side over here then is the adjacent. Which one don't we care about this time? Which trig ratio deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So sine of, what's our angle? 20 equals, remember sine, that's the so part. What over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So what's that give us this time? 33 over x. Put a 1 underneath this. What's the first thing you do then with your calculator? Find the sine of 20. Don't hit second. Just find the sine of 20. What's it give you? 3, 4. Is that right? 2, 0. Oh. Okay. I just didn't do it on my calculator. So 0 0.3420. Remember, with sine or cosine, what should always be true about the number you get? Less than one. Should be less than 1. If it isn't, then you messed up somewhere. How do we solve that? Cross multiply. I'll do the hard part for you. 0 0.3420 times x. You guys can do the easy part. What's 1 times 33? <laughs> Divide both sides by 0 0.3420. What is it? Everybody agree with that? 96.5. Does that make sense? If you're dividing by a decimal, what should happen to your whole number? Should get bigger. Should go up. So it makes sense that... This person's binoculars is 96 and a half feet from the whale. Yeah, I guess. I don't know why you wouldn't know how far the binoculars are from the whale, but. This is what engineers do for fun. Yes. Other questions? What do you find on your calculator? How to do the rest of this? What do you do first? All right, so just take your calculator, hit tangent, eight degrees. Anytime you have a word in your equation, that's going to be the first thing you want to get rid of. You don't want the word in there, so you got you need to find the tangent or the sine or the cosine of that certain angle. And what you come up with? One four oh five. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. That's still over 1, 38 over x. We cross multiply, you get 0 0.1405 times x equals 38. Divide both sides. So on your calculator, divide 38 by 1 point, or 0 0.104. 1.1405. Should it be that big a number? 270? Yeah. And what was it, meters? So we're saying that. You said around to the nearest 
Oh, it's that whole number. So, 270. So we're saying that the distance she is from her car, from here to there, about 270 feet. Now, if we weren't sure which one they actually wanted us to find, could we find that other one to make sure that we knew both distances? Yeah, you just use a different trig ratio. If I wasn't looking for this one, if this was the one I was looking for, which trig ratio deals with the offset and hypotenuse? Mm. Sine. So you just do the sine of 8 degrees equals 38 over x. Put a 1 under that, do all the same stuff. All right, look at the top four on that page. Name the angle for me in number one that's an angle of depression. FLS. Does everybody see that angle? FLS? That's angle of depression. Uh, name the angle that's angle of elevation. TSL. TSL. Uh, number two, just use one letter because none of these can. All these can be named with just one letter. I mean, you, it's all right to name three, but just to make it quicker. Number two, angle uh, elevation. Angle W. Angle depression. T. Number three, angle of elevation. C. Which one is it, B or C? B. B. Angle depression. C. C. All right, remember. Looking down, the deer is looking down at the people, the people are looking up at the deer. <coughs> Number four, angle of uh, elevation. P, angle of depression, C. Other questions, other problems you want to see work? Yes, no, maybe? Two on the third page. Find the angle of elevation of the sun when a 12.5 meter uh, tall telephone pole casts an 18 meter shadow. Remember when we were doing these shadow problems last chapter? And you needed two triangles, right? So you could set up your proportion. Well, when you sine, cosine, tangent, the trig ratios, you don't need two triangles anymore. You just need one. So you need less information to find the same stuff out. So we have this picture. Hopefully the pole makes a right angle with the ground there. We're looking for this angle. This is 18 meters. This is 12.5 meters. These are the ones that everybody always seems to have trouble with when you're finding an angle because we don't do that as often as we find the sides. These should be the easier ones. You just reverse your Right, because you, all you do is let your calculator do the work, all right? First thing I do, label the triangle. What's, that's opposite. That's the, this is the, which two do we care about this time? We don't care about hypotenuse this time. Uh, could we find the hypotenuse? What could you use to find the hypotenuse going back? If you know two sides of a right triangle, what can you use to find the third? Pythagorean's theorem. Pythagorean's theorem. Don't forget that, all right? All the families, all that stuff also. Well, this isn't going to fit a family because it's crazy numbers. All right? Uh, which trig ratio deals with opposite and adjacent? So we do the tangent. What's our angle this time? Equals, remember, TOA. Written this up here about 10 times now. What over what? Opposite over adjacent. So, take your calculator. This time, instead of just hitting tangent, what do we hit? 
hit second, tangent, punch in 12.5 divided by Divided by 18. Sorry, I hit the wrong thing on my calculator. And it should tell you the angle. What angle does it tell us? What it tells to do with this angle? Does it say round it to nearest degree, tenth, what? Nearest degree. Nearest degree. So. Nearest whole number. So 35 degrees. So that angle right there is 35 degrees. What was this? Sun and stuff? What angle is the sun shining on the pole at? How can we find that? 90 minus 35, or 90, you could do 90 plus uh, 35 subtracted from 180, do all that. So that angle up there is 55. They didn't ask us to find that, but some of the problems that we do today, they're going to ask you to solve the triangle. And when they say solve the triangle, means find all the angles and find all the sides. Again, we could find this side over here by using Pythagorean's theorem. You could use one of the trig ratios to find that missing side. Any of those would work. Other questions? Any of that coming back, Carson? What? Any of that coming? Apparently not. Yes. Any of that coming back? Forgot where you were for a minute. Yeah, I forgot the class. Oh, off, off, in, off in Carsonville. Is it a nice place? Passing back to Brighton and Lucas. Not you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can land right here, Corbin, when you get set up. Just where you ended up laying down off on sure on this one I don't mess up do the same thing I did the other time so on this one we got our students standing here we got some water tower over here apparently there's a soccer field in between uh, 110 feet from the water tower The water tower is 32 and a half feet tall, 32.5 feet tall. They want to know the angle of elevation. The bad thing is that they tell us that the student is, or the student's eye is six feet off the ground. So what do we have to do over here? So what's that give you? What is it? 
That's 110 down there. We're looking for this angle. Without me labeling everything and stuff, somebody tell me how I'm, what am I going to set up? 26 divided by 110. All right, 26 divided by 110. What's your trig ratio that you're using this time? Tangent of x. What do you do when you're looking for an angle? All right, tan second, or I'm sorry, second tan. Punch in those numbers. What is it? So what's a what, nearest tenth of a degree? So thirteen point six degrees. No, it's thirteen point five because it's five four. Oh, okay, thirteen point five degrees. And if you round it off to the nearest degree, I wouldn't throw a big fit on that because that's why I've been telling you to do anyway. Pick another one. Seven. Problem seven. On problem seven. We're going to, in a few days, we're going to learn a different way to do a problem like this one. But for now, we'll do uh, use this method. Uh, let's see if I can just draw this. Won't somebody read it while I'm trying to draw it? I'll make a good pick. What number? Number seven. seven. All right. Mr. Dominguez <laughs> is standing <laughs> on a 40 foot ocean floor near his home. He can see two dogs on the beach below. If his line of sight is six feet above the ground and the angles of depression to his dogs are 34 degrees and 48, how far apart are the dogs to the nearest foot? Yeah, man. So, watch carefully on this one. This is one. Now, I'm not sure that you'd ever be looking for the distance between your two dogs, but... Could you be looking for some the distance between two other things and that would actually make sense to find the distance between? Yes. Like, uh, you know, if, if let's say you joined the Marines and you're up on the hill scoping this out, might you want to know to call down and tell Austin, hey, Austin, uh, the enemy are like 115 feet from you. Carlton is All right? You, you might want to know that, right? So. This is something that's real useful. All right, so on this, uh, let's see here. How do we, when I draw this triangle, if I draw the first dog's triangle, we know this is 48 degrees. How long is this side over here? 46. You got to make sure you add that six on. He's 40 feet off the ground. He's six feet tall. Um, and we're looking for this distance down here. That's going to be labeled the what? Opposite leg. That's the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent. Which trig ratio we're going to be using this time? Tangent. Tangent. Tangent of 48 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, so 46 over x. Put a 1 under that. Somebody help me out so I don't have to keep grabbing my calculator. What's tangent of 48? 1.106. 1.106? 1.106. Equals 46 over x. Remember on that you just hit tan 48. Cross multiply so I don't have to write all this out. We know that that's 46, 1 times 46. So take 46, divide it by 1.1106. What do you get? Forty-one. Forty-one? Yeah. So 41 feet. So from the bluff to the first dog is 41 feet. Well, we don't want to know that. We want to know the distance between the two dogs. What else are we going to have to find? The second triangle. All right, the second triangle. The bluff, what we're actually going to find this time is how far the second dog is. Know that that's 34. 
Uh, still 46 over here. We're looking for this. Is it going to be the same setup? Yeah, except this time it's tangent of what's our angle? 34. Put that over 1 equals this time instead of, uh, or it's going to be 46 over x again. What is the tangent of 34? 4, 5. Cross multiply. All you're going to do again, 1 times 46 is 46. Take 46 and divide it by that 0.6745 that you got. What that give you? Divide 46 by that, what's it give you? Nobody wants to help me anymore? 68. So if I agree with that, 68? 68 minus 41 is 27. Right. We want this distance, so Corbin knows you got to take 68, subtract off 41, what do you get? 27. So the dogs are how many feet apart? 27 feet apart. 27 feet apart. All right, your actual assignment. I don't care about this worksheet. What? Well, you're not caring about the one we just did. No. What about this one? This one here is the one I care about. This is your assignment. I knew we should have, I was going to ask you to do some off the other one. The packet though. Make sure the packet's finished next time. I will probably collect it next time. Don't forget, uh, next class, map test. Had to thank you. Don't forget that.